Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're actually going to be switching gears just a little bit and we're still going to be running a dual weapon or dual sword type build. However, this time we're going to be using a dual weapon build on the Barbarian class. And this is actually, not going to lie, the first time I ever tried dual axe barb. And I'm not even using that great of weapons and I'm hitting like 70s, you know, even across the board with both weapons. Almost 80. And like, look at that, it's a, it's a white horseman's axe and a green hatchet. So jumping from a dual sword setup on the fighter class that struggles to get into the 70s because your damage and your strength numbers just aren't as good, you know, with the barbarian class, you can put out some crazy amount of damage quickly. And I mean, it's like free damage. You don't really have to do a whole lot to do this. That being said, I am using the bare chested um, perk and axe specialization, which you all know. My point is, a lot of these perks are, you know, very well suited for this setup. Unlike the fighter, which has a lot of blocking and basically armor stat and movement speed perks that don't really support the dual sword setup as much as I'd like. So hopefully next playtest we'll see that. So this one gets rolling really quickly and I actually am a little bit mad at myself right here because I forgot my axe to break down this door. So I'm a little annoyed because I'm now opening doors. I hear footsteps. And here's my chance to test this out. And that worked out very well considering it was the first time using dual axes. It was kind of nice of the guy to judgment his own player, but, you know, we'll take those. I'm just hoping these guys have a bit of meds because, uh, taking any damage at all in the barb means you have a lot of work getting it all back. Fortunately enough, we do get a lot of meds. Like, a lot more meds than I was expecting from guys wearing such light gear. Not realizing how silly it would be for a barb to be able to wear that chaperone. Um, kind of forgetting that I'm on the barbarian class because fighter would be able to wear that, I think. These guys have an odd mix match of stuff. I don't know if they found some of this stuff, but this is literally like the very start of the map, so. They must have brought in just a little few bits and pieces of what they had. Hopefully it wasn't all they had. Like I said, healing up a barb with like 10 HP bandages can take a long time. Like you drop half your HP down, that's seven bandages. Uh, 70 damage, so... Luckily these guys left me some nice pots and some better bandages. Originally, I did absolutely hate this spawn that these guys were stuck with. I just thought it was just too crowded. Uh, I didn't like dropping down to this lower section. But, that being said, the more I played this, and the more I played this new spawn, I actually like it, because as you can see right there, a lot of the mobs actually just end up killing themselves. So as long as we avoid all those traps on the ground, we should be able to make it out of here, no problem. That is, of course, once we get back to full HP. Yep, free, uh, free zombie. Gives us a decent pot. <sighs> Managing pots can be kind of a pain in the ass when you don't have any sort of indicator on them as to what level they are. So if you're trying to pot stack, it's just constantly moving them around. I still don't understand this. Like, it's feeding on the other zombie. And just like that, I'm now surrounded by three of these guys, all spewing their stupid little cloud. Shouldn't be too difficult. I'm just kind of testing out the swing pattern here because I've never actually used it. And I want to see if it's actually functional. These two must have ate a fighter or something because they're pretty much carrying a fighter starter kit. 
Through all this racket, I do end up hearing the steps above me. I decide, why not just go for it? I'm testing this stuff out. Thought I heard multiple steps, and there's really only one way out of this. So you don't want to get stuck down there. I pot up expecting there to be a team right on top of me. However, sometimes the verticality and the noises can be a little deceiving. So I don't know where these guys actually went. I have no idea how they didn't hear me, but they're in for a real surprise. Yeah, that dual combo actually worked quite nicely. It's crazy how strong Barb is at just holding W, and then with this, you can just hold down both mouse buttons. But now, unfortunately, even with our success, we have to sit here and bandage, and heal, and bandage, and heal. They do have a few small meds for us, but probably not enough to make up what we lost. Some boots I'll probably use later. Reinforced gloves aren't too bad, because you do get a little bit more uh, resistances from them. You just don't get the added agility or strength of some of the other gloves. Hearing steps once again, I think this guy believes we're actually underneath him, so he's looking for us. Gives me a little more time to pop some meds. This isn't a fight I'm too afraid of. Don't think he's got anything crazy, but rogues can be surprising because they look like they always have light gear. Just depends on how strong that dagger is. And we're gonna pot up just in case. You may have just messed off, but among rogues, you could just be crouched in a corner invisible, too. Once again, we gotta manage our inventory, mess around with pots because we don't know what rarity they are. And hope this guy doesn't shank us in the back. So I guess we're just gonna waste another protection pot. Really thought he'd stick around, but I understand. Barbarians can be intimidating. After playing so much fighter, I'm just used to opening doors. Even though I looted an axe off that barbarian, here I am still stuck in the old habit of opening doors. I'm actually running Smash as a perk, so it's kind of a bit of a letdown. Um, not making the most of that. Yeah, that swing speed is really nice. gonna quickly get back to full HP. These rooms are actually really busy. It's actually a really interesting room for PvP because there's a lot of different ways this room connects to other main lobbies. Or main areas, like the one you can see in the corner of the map is a pretty deadly room for a solo player. The skeleton champion, so we usually like to avoid going in that room, especially being the first player in it. And having recently learned about the ladder thing, I may actually try to bait some players into this ladder and um, see if we can get the jump on them. It's probably the smoothest I've ever done that too. It's actually a very cheese strat, but as a solo player you take what you can get, including any likes and subscribers from people enjoying your content. So if we can use this spot to our advantage, I'm definitely going to give it a little chance here. Zone's not really pushing us. I have no interest in going into that big room by myself. Or clearing any of those rooms just to be um, caught by a team of three. So we kind of just sit and chill. This is still one of my earlier kind of runs on the dual axe setup. So I am trying to build a little bit of inventory or money. So I can continue you know, giving this a proper, um, a proper chance. So far so good though. I mean the attack speed's nice. And the swing combination with the hatchet and horseman's act appears to have, you know, a fair bit of promise. 70 hit per swing is no joke with both these weapons swinging at maximum speed. You throw in a couple of blue weapons or purple weapons into this mix, and that's like, what, 100 plus damage per swing? Which is a little bit absurd, actually. So. Chilling up here is nice, but I am starting to grow a little tired of it. 
zone's starting to creep in, and I don't see any stragglers really appearing through the mist, so it may be best just to chalk this up as a maybe next time sort of deal. Sounds of those um, weapon traps, I don't know what they're called. It's actually kind of soothing after a while. However, you know, we do need to find a portal at some point in time and make it out of this place. The zone's coming. We're on our way. I'm kind of surprised that I didn't see anybody. And we're back to doing the silly thing of opening doors with the barbarian. We spot this little guy just chilling by fire. He wasn't actually using it, though. And now he's absolutely terrified. I think somehow we've hit him through the darkness. Still not entirely sure. Thankfully he had a pot attached to his hip, or else we would have had no idea where to swing. This guy actually has some decent stuff on him. I mean, decent for someone starting out. And uh, there's times like this where I wonder, why didn't he just try to fight me? You know, I'm not wearing any armor. That armor sort of his would have hit really hard. Oh, I guess we're going to have to deal with some magic too. I got way too close. We're gonna chase him off. And luckily we find another portal behind this door, so everything goes poorly here. We have an escape route. I do want to kind of fight him. Simply because 76 damage on a horseman's axe is pretty much two swings and he's toast. And I finally learned that I can break down doors with my axe, and the skeleton does it for me. Seeing the wizard kind of sprint by, I'm actually tempted here. If we can get him cornered and dodge the magic missiles, we should be fine. And he just jumps over again, so... He's just gonna stick away from me and probably try to grab that blue portal outside the zone. So I might just pop this one and, you know, basically camp it for a bit, but... I don't want to get running at him in straight lines. Protection pot isn't really going to help me much. And he basically makes the decision for me, launching me into the portal. So, there we have it. We successfully made it out. This guy was actually mining stuff, which is kind of rare. I'm not sure what items a wizard can get. I have no idea. I've never really played wizard enough to know. There's a question for you guys. What items can a wizard get with the mine materials? So, look, I know a lot of you mentioned I should be keeping the sale of this stuff in the video and I'll be very sorry and apologize right now. A lot of times I cut it out and I do here as well but next time when I start recording stuff again I'll remember to do this. A pretty good run, pretty good amount of loot and I'm pretty satisfied. So I did actually go on to use this build or this setup uh, a fair bit in the future and overall this was the first run using it so I was pretty satisfied just from this one kind of opportunity I gave it alone. I think it's possible to make it work. I know a lot of people mentioned just straight horsemen's might be a better option, and I have more on that coming up in the future. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the subs, all the likes, and I will see you next time.